evangelization begins with witness, which goes back to your, your great question, Steve, earlier. Like when we say evangelization, what does that even mean? <clears throat> Interestingly, it's not it's not used often um, in scripture as a noun, you know, evangelization. And when we talk about to evangelize, but we're, what it ends up being in the biblical Greek is this idea of proclaiming the gospel message or sh demonstrating or proclaiming the gospel message in some way. But, you know, like more modern takes on evangelization, if you just go onto YouTube and type in evangelization, you're going to see everything from maybe you remember Benny Hinn, that old uh, TV evangelist, very charismatic. Who knows if he was authentic or not, but so. yeah, or Jim and Tammy Baker, like that type right, of yeah. evangelical. Right. Right. So we're, we are like thumping Bibles and we're knocking people over, slain with the Holy spirit and so forth. And people have these kinds of, you know, really dramatic ideas or examples that, that come to mind when we think of evangelization, but tr in truth, evangelization is what, how that word gets used in the Greek. It's how we talk about or demonstrate the good news. That's it. So it's how we proclaim or demonstrate the good news. So that tells us that there are some words that we can use. You know, we don't have to quote scripture at the dinner table this Thanksgiving. If you if you pray about it and feel so inclined to do it, go for it. But it might be just words that speak a scriptural language like love. God is love. First John 4, right? Jesus came to bring God's love, the Father's love into the world, right? So what about being speaking a loving language this Thanksgiving, being very kind this Thanksgiving, being generous? And I'm thinking of 1 Corinthians 13. I just did a wedding for my for my sister down in Tulsa. She and her awesome husband now, Keaton and Kelsey, but they chose 1 Corinthians 13 for their reading, as so many people do for weddings. And it says, love is patient, love is kind, love doesn't puff up, love, all these things. Okay. But maybe take that scripture as well as your guide, your guiding light for how can I speak a biblical language or share the scripture with words and, but not necessarily quote scripture at people, right? How can I, how can I show kindness, right? Demonstrate or, or talk about the good news. How can I show kindness? How can I show patience? How can I not be prideful this Thanksgiving? What do you think about that, Steve? I like it a lot because you know, I like it. I like it. I love it. I want some more of it. Oh, there it is. Oh my gosh. Did you say Lyle love it? No, you said I want some more of it. I got gotcha. you. No, I'm just from Georgia. <laughs> we talk that way. No, I, I, I think example, you know, it has to be the example leads because our, our kids, I'll speak for myself. Our kids have heard enough, you know, say this and do that. Usually other things. And, mm -hmm. and so if we can show that, I think that's so powerful. And that scripture verse, the first Corinthians 13, that's, we've got that on our, oh, yeah. on our wall in our bedroom. Do you have that? How many verses do you have? Do you go the whole way on that one? That's a lot. It's okay. You probably do then. It says something about a gong and uh, other things. <laughs> right. Like a clanging symbol or a gong. Yeah, if I don't it. have love. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Oh no. You're talking about the gong show. Is that what you're talking about? You got gonged on the gong show? <laughs> well, that's tried a different story. <laughs> tried posing as a Christian? <laughs> that, was, that was a different story. No. <laughs> that's when we dressed up as, well, never mind. <laughs> All the viewers are wondering. You dressed up like salmon swimming upstream. We dressed up like the band Kiss when I was in high school and got gonged. Nice. Is that true? That is true. You were on the gong show? Not the real, it was our, oh, our oh, I was like, get <laughs> out. Oh my gosh. That's yeah, fantastic. Good times. All right. So when you think evangelization this Thanksgiving, we want you to first think about how can I demonstrate what I've come to believe and know in the good news, like Jesus loves us. How do I demonstrate that love? How do I talk in a loving language? Right? So that leads us to our next point. All right. What about attitudes? So what helps us act in a way that's consonant with gospel values and teachings is if we have the right attitude. If we come to Thanksgiving dinner or whatever, you, whenever you have it, lunch or something else, if you come to the table with these presuppositions, and maybe you have a family member already picked out, 
Maybe it's old Aunt Louise. She's just always been mean. She's always been down on your Catholic faith. Maybe she's of another Christian denomination or something. Never wants to hear about it. And so you're coming to Thanksgiving thinking about Aunt Louise. And you're like, you know what? Why? I don't even know what to say because she's just going to berate me. She's going to make me feel small. It's going to be really uncomfortable. If you come in like that, if that's your attitude, you see her as, as an enemy. You don't see her as a child of God, as someone that God might be calling you to pour some love, right? Show her some love. And, and boy, I know it's a challenge. We all have somebody that's difficult to deal with in our, but you might be called to meet that challenge. And here's what I'm suggesting attitude wise. If we go in with fear, with trepidation, with anxiety, and with being worried about what the reaction is going to be, the, the evangelization action or, or whatever we're doing is not going to come off very well. It's going to be sapped of its power for sure. Because again, it's all rooted in our faith and faith means trust. And if we're worried and we're anxious and we're fearful and, and we're just so caught up with what the reaction is going to be, there's not a lot of room for trust there. Not a lot of room for trust. Go ahead, Steve. We're going to jump in. Yeah, I was just going to say, I love the way that you're sort of wrapping this up together. It's very practical, you know, We've and we're not done yet, but just making it very practical and safe in a sense that it's okay to talk about our faith. Uh, we need to be more reflective through our <coughs> actions, sensitive mm -hmm. to people and where they're at. And I wanted to, to go back to Eddie's response to a, a, an earlier question. He said, Yes, prayer before meals and time to share what we've been thankful for. So the question was, do you evangelize, you know, your family during Thanksgiving or other mm -hmm. other family events like that? And this is so simple and it's confident, but simple and non-threatening. And especially when we're talking about Thanksgiving, yeah, many of us talk about what we're thankful for. But think if we did not do that, mm. would we be modeling you know, our faith or our gratitude, that attitude of gratitude to our family members. This is how they learn to be grateful. Right. That's a great point. Thank you, Eddie, for that, that, those wonderful words. You're so right on. And, and that's really in our point here that gratitude is the attitude of evangelization. You know, Steve just said it and you just pointed it out in an example of being saying what you're grateful for, or thankful for at your meal. Did you ever think though, and I'm going to I'm going to just up the ante a little bit and I'm only doing this because this is this can be very effective. It's one thing to say I'm thankful for those gathered around the table and let's say we have the Aunt Louise situation, right? And we just struggle with her, or she struggles with us. It's another thing after the dinner or before to pull Aunt Louise aside and say, "I really want to tell you, it means a lot that you're here." And to say even, you know, to be even more vulnerable, and I think there's a real strong correlation between deep gratitude, radical gratitude, and radical vulnerability. And to mm -hmm. say to Aunt Louise, I know we don't get along, but it does mean a lot to me that you're here. And I just want to say I'm very thankful to God for you. you that, that will blow the doors off Aunt Louise. It doesn't mean she's going to become Catholic. But it just means you've you've absolutely turned her view of you upside down. You've really challenged it because you acted totally in a way that was unexpected. Right. And and I think that's what we see Jesus doing. And these are little ways we can do the same in in this attitude of gratitude. But you have to be sincere. Yes. You really wish you that Anthony. sincere. <laughs> if you wish she wasn't there, then don't say it. <laughs> I'm really glad you're here, Aunt Louise. Now that's not going to go on very well. <laughs> but I, I I love the suggestion that we we recognize and we share that appreciation. Yeah. Because because people need to hear that that others are excited that they're there. They do. they need to hear that you know and yeah. and especially if they are are aware that they you know are not maybe not the most pleasant to people <laughs> to be around. Mm -hmm. For whatever mm -hmm. reason, maybe there's some other situation happening, but but to but to open your heart and say that is a wonderful mm -hmm. wonderful thing. I should that. do that about you know all of my family members, whether or not they're difficult, you know. Yeah, but and, and it's funny that it's like not second nature for us, even with no. family. We take uh, that for granted, right? I think I think you got it. I think it's exactly the reason. Let's get into that third one, Steve, and you already led us with the scripture here, speaking words of encouragement. Any thoughts about that? 
there was something that connected with me in the last topic, but yeah, you know, being sure that what we are sharing is affirming. And, mm -hmm. and we can probably all think of family members that like to tear other family members oh, down, even if yes. it's just trying to be funny. Yes. And it's really not a good practice. I mean, we could find more scripture that speaks against that. Yeah, right. But Ephesians saying, let no corrupting talk, let nothing bad come out of your mouth, but only such as good for building up that it may give grace to those who hear. Right. And as I think the example that you just gave was a great example for the scripture, but especially to not jump on the bandwagon of someone who's tearing other people down. Right. And again, I think it goes back to what is your attitude going into this? If you really do have an attitude of gratitude this Thanksgiving, you're not plotting, you're not thinking about tactics. This is not a strategy thing. This is not war. What you're trying, you're not, you're not trying to gain ground here. What you're trying, you're not trying to win arguments. Right. You're, you're just trying to express. And like you, you so well pointed out, it has to be sincere. If you're not sincere about Aunt Louise's presence, uh, and that you're grateful for it, don't say it because she'll know. <laughs> we know we sniff out insincerity really easily. It's it's easy to tell, but it's about what is your attitude going into this? Uh, yep. And yep. So uh, I can't agree more with what you said. Yeah. And I can't agree more with what you said, Deacon. Matt. Oh man. We just, we're so good. I'm, I'm grateful that we have the opportunity to talk. Oh, about I'm this. grateful as well. I'm Truly. grateful. I am. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do one more and we'll wrap this up. What about following up with family after? I think this is where we all probably let the, uh, drop the ball. We, maybe we do try to get ourselves ready mentally, spiritually. We go into the Thanksgiving. We're going to have the right attitude, the right disposition. I'm going to be helpful. I'm going to be grateful. I'm going to try to do what evangelization is, right? I'm going to try to demonstrate and speak the good news in this household. <clears throat> but then do we ever follow up? Because if we don't, then we know any, we've all had an experience of a one and done. Maybe it was a great homily or maybe it was a great retreat or whatever it was, but we didn't do anything to build on that. It just dies. It just dies. And then if it's extended family or even if it's immediate family, but if you don't see them, it becomes out of sight, out of mind. And that's what happens in our own personal relationship with Jesus, right? If we don't intentionally pray, Jesus, who is clearly not, he, he's in heaven, right? And and for us, he's not vi visible except sacramentally. It's out of sight, out of mind. Yeah, you know, it, it takes me back to the planting seeds, you know, being loving to our family members, some, something we talked about a few minutes ago. And maybe we're planting seeds, putting ideas out there that are, you know, safe, mm -hmm. uh, depending on the relationship. And we need to water those seeds. And so if we're not, giving proper nourishment, then how can we expect that to really grow? Mm -hmm. So that's my, my seed analogy, watering analogy. That was Deep Thoughts with Steve Botsford. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a couple links to give to you tonight to help you with sharing faith in your family. So Deb, would you mind dropping those? There's the first one. We have some family resources from Sadler. Check out that link. And here is number two. Thank you, Sadler, for all these wonderful resources. Yeah, you know, the, the Thanksgiving prayer service can be adapted for a family setting. And so if, if you're thinking, maybe I could enhance that prayer just a bit instead of, you know, the traditional blessing over the food, Maybe you want to try to incorporate something where different family members could have a speaking part, you know, give them a little piece of paper and they would go around and we're going to take turns reading or contributing to this prayer. Uh, just en enhancing that just a bit can be very powerful. And I've done that and I've had family members roll their eyes when I bring hmm. out, you know, we've got 20 right. something people over and everybody gets a piece, piece of paper and they're like, the food's going to be freezing by the time we finish this. <laughs> But it's planting those seeds and it's non-threatening yes. and it's, and it's yes. setting the example that our children will learn from. So, Well, well, even if you do have a, a litany of Thanksgivings to get through and the food is getting cold, at the very end, we can thank, thank God for microwaves and throw it back in there, you know. Amen. Or the Amen, oven brother. or whatever you're using. 